Hi there, this is John from Pino Comics. This is the other John from Pino Comics. And we just wanted to warn you, before you tune into our quite excellent show, that we may or may not use... What, what type of term would you use for the language, John? Swearing with flair. Swearing with flair. Colorful language. Colorful language. Or just plain out, I don't know. Gutter talk. Gutter talk, there we go. You've been warned. Listen in. <laughs> Welcome back, Pina Comics fans. It's me again, Sir John, with uh, my fellow host. Johnny Ganache. Johnny Ganache. Isn't that lovely? I guess today we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of things, including comics, games, movies, and probably, you know, that stuff you found on the floor. That's right. We, we're gonna. It's going to be a whole potpourri episode. We're going to talk about... Potpourri. What have we read? What have we watched? What are we into right now? I, I'll, I'll have uh, potpourri. Pot, for, potpourri for, for 200 pot, Alex? Yeah. Alex, is, you, you ever <laughs> notice as, as Jeopardy goes along, he, he doesn't even hide his disdain for these people anymore. No, not at all. Not at all. He's just like, he's just standing there like, you fucking nerd. <laughs> That's how we roll into it. Alex, Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek, Canadian nerd hater. <laughs> <laughs> he really didn't like Ken <laughs> Jennings, the guy that was winning for a long time. Probably knew him too. You know, yeah. Once you get to know these guys, you're like, oh, how does he know all this crap? I don't he even know this crap. Go get laid, Ken. <laughs> Poor Ken. Poor Ken. And Dennis. he came back. He did. Yeah. He did. I mean, I, I don't remember, even watch Jeopardy, and I know. Oh no! I mean, when I was when I was younger, Jeopardy didn't let champs go past what, like a week, right? I he was remember. the first one I think that they let go. Like, he won, let like, it ride, baby. Let it ride. <laughs> Put it all on Jennings. You know, and let it ride. You know what it was? It was the ratings. They were getting so much uh, viewership from just that one guy and yeah. getting that that far. That's that's what it is. It's all it's all the money. How do you think he would have done on Wheel of Fortune though? There was always that disparity of Wheel of Fortune, because for me, I mean, I'm okay at what? Jeopardy, but I would watch Wheel of Fortune and feel like a king. Because I knew it was like, I know that over the rainbow. And I would, yay. And then I'd get to, to Jeopardy and I'd be like, I have no clue what the capital of uh, of South Africa is. Wasn't he one of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints uh, or something like that? I don't that? know, was or, he? Or a Mormon? Mormon. Or is that both the same thing? It's the same thing. Is it? You sure? The, you the positive. Church of, La- the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day they're, they're Saints. the same thing? Yeah. All you Mormons that listen, please uh, let us know how badly I worked, I've screwed that up. So I, I think you're right. Utah, Mormons, that whole Whatever. Night, that whole, yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. I don't know if you'd be able to handle it because, uh, you know. Vanna White is there doing subservient work. Vanna's still there. Is she? She's still oh, there. She's 76 scary. years old, still there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Really? She's Betty half, White's she, age. She's half robot. <laughs> Betty White. Betty White's 99. You know, as we're talking about this, it's kind of funny because we're going to talk about stuff. We were going to talk about stuff. <laughs> Was there ever like, a game show in particular that you were really fond of? I don't know. I mean, at one point, I watched a lot of Prices Right. Price is Right to yeah, me always had that Bob feeling. Bob Barker was on, and yeah. it's just he was something. Price is Right always to me. Even to this day, it's if I so ever come across dated. it, oh. it's dated, and it has that sick day off from school feel yes. to it. You know, you yes. only got to see yeah. it That's the only 11 time o'clock in the yeah. morning. Same time every Same morning. Time. And Bob Barker's giant, strange microphone yeah. that was looked like a little, like a, like a pen, but it was pulled out and it had the tiny little head on it. Which is uh, how I'm going to segue over to the the actual show I did watch as much as I could, which was the match game. Match game. I don't know if I ever saw the match game. Oh, the match game was hysterical. You could watch those in reruns and they never get old. I always like the clothing does, but they don't. What was the one that they used to show on the USA Network all the time? It was reruns. It was the whammy. What was the whammy one? Oh, that was... Press uh, your luck. Press your luck, yeah. No whammy, no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. That was always on one of the, the... like the New York stations that we yeah. didn't get in on the TV that well. You know, you'd have yeah, to have the rabbit ears. you to get up and move the rabbit ears around. Yeah. Remember that? Rabbit ears? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. I remember, I remember. I'm only 29, folks. You're only 29. <laughs> I remember being a little kid. And I remember we had we had a we didn't have HBO. We had the remote yeah. control with the wire, and it had a dial. And I remember my parents somehow figured out oh, that if, for if, cable, if you if you turned it a certain so, amount between, and then stuck like a fork or yep. a paper clip in it, and didn't, don't get electrocuted by the way, this is a bad idea. But you stuck something metal in it. All of a sudden, you, you got you got the station. And I remember I used to, yeah, we, and it wasn't even I, I didn't even use it as a kid to like watch like booby stuff. I would when, if my parents weren't around or if they were the my mom, titties. My mom was in the other room, you know, cleaning. I would I always would do it so I could watch stuff like stir crazy, you know, like so I could hear I could hear Gene Wilder and, and you know and 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 hear uh, Richard Pryor say motherfucker. You know what I mean? That was exciting to me as a kid. 
That's right. That's right. We bad. We bad. We bad. <laughs> Stir crazy. Uh, Movie buff. There you go. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Richard Pryor, what was he also in Uptown Saturday Night? Which oh, was a, yes, actually. That was a movie buff Uptown stumper Saturday we had Night. recently. Nobody knew about it. Uptown Saturday Night Rules. <laughs> yeah, I used to really enjoy I think my favorite game on The Price is Right, the one that if you said to me, like, I would love you to play, Plinko. 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 I want to stand on the top of that thing, that and I just want to... That was the thing about that show is that they had all the crazy games that you yeah. you, you get to know them after a while. Like oh, the yeah. one with the, what was the mountain man that you go up the hill and they play that stupid uh, Yoda music? I don't remember the name, but oh, I know you're talking about. God. And then they had the putting green game. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was probably one of Bob's ideas. Yeah. Well, well let's the, bring in some golf. Bob yeah. had three ideas the entire run of The Price Is Right. Number one was the putting green game because it was something he did. He golfed. He was in, he was in Happy Gilmore. <laughs> number two was to make sure you always spayed and neutered your animals. Oh, yeah. And number yeah, three yeah. was he wanted to fuck as many of those girls <laughs> as he could. And he did, you know? Do you remember the period of time where Bob Barker was... He always was on the show, jet black hair, and yep. then there was that one episode where he went white. And, and you it's know like, why? I assumed it was because he just went, I'm not fooling anybody anymore. No, he was he was coloring his hair, yeah. and he found out that the, the dye, br- or the or he was using Brill Cream or something like that, and, and it was, it was made based. from animal. Yeah, and he found out that they were using it on animals or, or had animal byproduct in it, and he was oh. like, I'm done, and he, and he just went white. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember. Probably the, one of the best things he ever did, because he went from that, fake look to yeah. he looked great with the silver with the, fox yeah. man there was nothing wrong with bob barker no 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 and then and then he did happy gilmore he punched the, he knocked like, him right, right the fuck out like, he was like reviving his career he yeah. he suddenly had a whole new influx of people at the price is right screaming his name because he beat up on yeah. Adam Sandler. you know what's crazy about the price is right too is that the show is still on and drew carey's been there for like 10 or 12 years now Has it's it been, been a, it's been a long really? time Jeez. and i i've always like i love the drew carey show i will occasionally catch it but it's like it's almost like even though he's been there that long that's still Bob Barker's show. Oh, yeah. You, you'd think Bob Barker automatically. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long. Carrie could be there another 30 years. You know, it's weird because a lot of shows don't do that. Johnny Carson, eventually, you, yeah. you got to think of Jay Leno as the host, whether you liked him or not, oh. it, it, because he was there long enough. Yeah. I think Drew Carey's always going to have the ghost of, uh, of, of old Bob Barker hanging over him. Yeah, that's the way it's going to be. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, he'll leave, too. He will. Maybe. He will eventually. Maybe. I don't know. I could see you doing that job. Yeah. I could definitely see you harassing all the chicks that are on that show. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Funny story. You got a job interview at CBS tomorrow? No, I actually, yeah, that, that'd be even funnier. No, I, I did a uh, audition for the game show Network at one point down at Toad's Place in New Haven. Did you really? I did. For, to be on it or to be a host? Be a host for a program. That, I guess they were they were trying to design their own new program. Right. And they were looking for a host somewhere in the country. And they had, they had uh, various auditions around the country. And I and about, I, I, there wasn't that many people, maybe 20, 25 people did it. It was, it was an experience. Yeah, well, I mean, that's something to, you know, put on the, on the I did that list. Uh, and, and it's funny, when I was there, I, I ran into a guy who was a DJ, a local DJ, and, and uh, <laughs> we had a lot to talk about after that, because it was fun. He was really trying for it, and I'm like, I'm just giving it a whirl, what the hell, you know? I could definitely see you doing one of these new age, you know, kind of hipper game shows. I'm not sure what program they put on, but I have a feeling it was one of the ones with the really hot, cute chick. Yeah. You know, they weren't looking for a dude. No. Not, not a but 20, I don't know. Not don't a know. 29-year-old guy like you, at least. I probably was 29 then. But <laughs> so last year? Um, no, this year. Oh, okay. Remember the game show network? <laughs> G- it was called GSN. It was called GSN. Uh, uh, there, you know, game shows is funny. There's been a couple. I, I was never a big watcher of game shows, but there have been a few that, that uh, you know, kind of you, you get in this thing where if you're home from school a certain ben day. Ben Stein's money. But I like Ben Stein's money. But, I of like, course, that's not your typical game uh, Not your typical game, game show. show. There was a game show on Comedy Central actually right before Ben Stein's money for about a year or two, or it was after, called Beat the Geeks. Did you ever see that one? Yeah. That was a fantastic show, and it was on during the wrong time because... Yep. This is like going back like 18, 19 years ago. Yeah. I used to watch it. And I used to love to watch a show because, I, you know, movies and TV and yep. comics. And, and at that time, that stuff was there, but it wasn't like the levels it is now. Yep. That show now, people would love. People would kill for it. I'm not, I, I only saw a few of them, and I wasn't really impressed with it. They, they just, I don't know. It was something about, it, it seemed like it was canned. It, it wasn't. I, I get what you're saying, but I'm saying uh, that type of show know. nowadays. I'd have kill. to watch it again. But. The other show, oh, yeah, the other show I liked, VH1 uh, used to do, was they had their own version of Jeopardy. They had Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Did you ever see that? I never did. The guy who hosts uh, Survivor, Jeff Probst? Probst? Probst. 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 Jeff Probst. Probst. <laughs> he hosted that. And it was it was Jeopardy. Say it like Wilford Brimley. <laughs> that badass. <laughs> Je- and he did that show, and it was Jeopardy. It was just all music questions. All right. Just different categories of music questions. I used to love that show. Hmm. Yep. Yeah, Probably the last it. of the year. Never saw it. I don't know. I Game shows were, uh, like you say, sick day 
programming because right. they were always on in the morning, so right. you didn't see them during the week. But uh, yeah, the match game was on at night a lot, so I get to see that as much as possible. They they do match game like seventy seven and. You see that stuff because it and was match game. What was the idea of the show? Oh god, it was just stupid. It was um, you had six, I think six uh, guests that that were like um, named people in Hollywood, right? You know, and some of them were <laughs> the dregs of Hollywood. So Charles Nelson Riley was one of the. Oh the, no, not Charles uh, Nelson Riley. He, he was one of the key members of of the panelists, right? So you have two two. Um, so you'd have two two. Um, people coming on to play it gene rayburn the host would uh, ask a silly question and it would end up being like dumb dora was so dumb and everyone in the audience would go how dumb, how dumb was she and then he go, she was so dumb when she ate a sandwich she would do blank and the blank would be the person that was playing the game would have to come up with an idea and then everybody that had was to match it. had to match well yeah and they would do this silly theme song which i love playing when we're doing Cards Against Humanity. I think I have a sound bite on here somewhere. <laughs> and uh, during that time, he'd walk around and they'd say silly things to each other. And it, it wasn't really a game show so much as it was just an entertaining half hour of, of idiocy. Right, you know? right, right. And for the naughtiness factor, people loved it for that. Because someone would say boobs and it'd be a big deal. Well, like like the famous, what was it, the uh, the newlywed game when it was like, yes. what, what, the famous the one? The innuendo. Was, that, well, there was that one episode and it wasn't even innuendo. It was, right. what, what was the, what is the dirtiest place you, you and your husband ever had? In, in, in the in butt, the butt. Bob. <laughs> Wow. In the butt, Bob. Was it Bob Eubanks? Yeah, Bob Eubanks, yeah. I used to watch, I remember one of my... Uh, game uh, show hosts... As as a as a group, I mean yeah. that's a whole nother like subgenre of of fandom there because y- you'd have people that were like, oh, I wouldn't watch, I don't like, I don't like him, so I'm not gonna watch him. But I'll but I'll watch like uh, Bert Convy on Super yes. Password. Yes. You know, I, and the password is. I'm not a big fan. I, I you know I always w- one of the shows I remember watching a lot when I was you know sick at home. Five thousand dollar pyramid. No. As, as it slowly grew because of inflation. It was twenty thousand when I watched. Was it? it. Um, <laughs> I hated that show. Uh, I. I I always liked, and it's so ridiculous, but I always liked uh, Love Connection with Chuck Woolery. Be back in two and two. Two and two, because it was just... Did you like him, or did you just like Jim Carrey's version of him? <laughs> no, I liked him, and I just I used to like to watch, like, because you either had, like, these these dates that really worked out super well, or these people that just were hated each other, and now they had to talk about their horrible night. The dating game was even better. Yeah, yeah, the, I've seen the dating game. Especially, like, when the game show network was around, if it still is. Is it, is it not? Well, I, I, don't I don't have cable, know. so I don't know. I don't either. Cut the cable, man. Cut the cable. Cut the cable six. <laughs> But uh, you'd see some of the old episodes, and, and famous people would be on them before they were famous. Like Parker Stevenson was on. Ah, there was know, not that he's famous now, but <laughs> he was he he was he was one of the Hardy Boys. He was on Baywatch the first year when it was on NBC, and then they got rid of him. And he was married to Kirstie Alley. He was, if he's not still. No, not anymore. Not anymore. No, oh, you she, know that? she dropped him. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Scientologist told her he couldn't be oh, Parker geez. Stevenson anymore. They said that if you're going to be married to a, a Hardy Boy, it's got to be Sean Cassidy. Sean Cassidy. To do run, do run, run. 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 <laughs> my sister, I remember growing oh, up, boy. My, my sister Susie had a poster of Sean Cassidy, and I'm like, why do you love a girl? <laughs> like, <laughs> my sister's not a lesbian, uh, but I'm like, why do you have yeah. a crush on a girl? And she's like, that's Sean Cassidy. I'm like, that, that's a girl. I don't get it. Someday I'll, we'll have my sister on, and she can talk about her her, her, her uh, heartthrob, David Cassidy. <laughs> David Cassidy, really. Hi, Lois. You you know I don't know if you know this stuff. You know that um uh, the the girl from Arrow is David Cassidy's daughter, um Black Canary, uh, Katie Cassidy. Which one? The not not the one on Legends, not the original Black Canary. The one that. Well, that, I, don't, I don't know which one is which. So Laurel Lance, the the lawyer, the one that got killed. Yes. And is dead. Yes, that's not not the one that got killed and came back. No, right. That's right. that so one. Not is, the terrible actor. <laughs> no, that's Katie yeah. Katie Lotz, I think. Yeah, that uh, sounds right. The other one is is David Cassidy's daughter. Oh, getting into comics now. Let's talk some comics. <laughs> Since we went way off the rails again. That's all right. You know what? We're going to explain this to the fans of the show because we have many fans <laughs> on the show. If you've never listened to our old show, we sometimes get off on, on little tangents there. But you know what? Tangents are fun. We have a general idea of what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes we'll have a full kind of script written out, and sometimes we'll go, you want to do another one? Yeah. And we just do this. And that's exactly how tonight went. We did Let's our first show. One. We had a good idea for our first show. We meandered a little bit. And then it was like, hey, it's only uh, 855. You want to do another one? What do you want to talk about? Let's just talk. So yeah. that's what you're going to get. Let's you're going to get some talk. talk. Lots of talk. So comics, what, do you, what have you been reading? Uh, quite a bit of things, actually. Um, mostly independents. Uh, I haven't read. Well, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, I want to say I haven't read a Marvel comic in, in so many years, but that's not true. Right now, I'm, I'm still reading, although I'm going to drop it. Uh, the Great Lakes Avengers. GLA. Yep. 
I, I never read that. It was really good at one point. This was the one that included Squirrel Girl as, as a member? She was a member at one point, yeah. yeah. Um, the current lineup is more closely aligned to the original lineup, and it has followed a, a, a consistent storyline, so characters that were killed off are still dead. Right. That sort of thing. But it's not written very well. I'm not enjoying it. No. No, and the art is... It's trying to be funny, but it's not. It's trying to be... And, and I want that in a comic. I want to read one that's not all dreary and nasty all the time. But the last few people that wrote this... Dan Slott did a, a pretty remarkable job of that, right? Yeah, yeah. He, he did. And I, somebody else wrote it. And, and they did like a one-shot. There was a one-shot where Deadpool joined the group. Of course. And apparently he's coming back in a future issue. But it's just, it's just not... Good. How many just, issues is it on? I'm, I got up to issue seven. I oh, it'll probably get canceled pretty soon then. No, well, I don't know. They're not. I don't know. I can't. These days, I can't figure out what the hell they're keeping and what they're. Getting. Marvel has recently canceled. Actually, today I read they canceled uh, Nova, which I don't read, but they just canceled well, they, that. They flooded the market too. They they super flooded the market. They yeah. they canceled. Um, uh, from what I understand, how many ish, How many comic books can you handle of a, of a grade C character like Nova? I Iron don't even, Man. I don't even mind when you when you have the Nova book because there's going to be the fans out there that want the Nova book. Maybe it's not going to sell very well. I would rather see a Nova book being published than two Black Panther comics. Well, that's the thing. Then I then two Hulk comics. I'd rather see a little diversity than because that's what they did recently was they had Black Panther comic came out yep. last year. It was, it was Huge a big seller. hit. Big, big, big hit. Ta-Nehisi Coates, who's yep. a very big author, and and you know he went and it was a huge hit. So and they gave him the second book. But they did this book called Black Panther uh, World of Wakanda, which is supposed to be more of like the like more o- overreaching different characters in Wakanda. And Doctor Strange has been, uh, you know, the movie came out last year. Jason Aaron's been writing it. It's been going pretty well, selling, I guess, selling decently. They did Doctor Strange and the Sorcerer's Supreme. So yeah. now they have a second book. And over over the years that Doctor Strange has ever come out, never been a top tier selling title. No. Never. So you give him two books now? Why? Exactly. That, that That's what I'm saying. I'd rather have a Nova he's, he's book. He's a grade D character, if you ask <laughs> me. I mean, that's how low... I don't, back when I had a store, couldn't even sell a single issue of a Doctor Strange comic. It's just it's just stupid. Yeah, well, to have two two series of it, even, even if the movie has bolstered sales, just... If. If. And I don't know if you saw this or not, but I think I had mentioned this to you. So I, I buy, the way I do it is I, I buy my Marvel books. I know. you got the one right across the board of all Marvel. Uh, no, no, I don't do all Marvel. No, no, no. no, no, no. You don't. God, no. no. All new X-Men, all new yesterday's X-Men. No. Yeah. Yesterday's X-Men <laughs> two, plus two one. Weeks, two weeks from last Tuesday's X-Men. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't actually read any X-Men title at all. The only X-Men title that I ever... I don't think anybody does right now. <laughs> um, well, they just came out with new ones. There's, yeah, there's yeah, blue yeah. and gold and, mm, yeah. and turquoise. Yeah, and, and, of uh, course, uh, what was it? Uh, yeah, Al- uh, gold. It was gold. the gold one yeah, that uh, caused Cy- all this. Syaf there yeah. uh, decided to put some political stuff in there that Polit- didn't float Politically too well. racist stuff. And now, and now everybody is jumping to get that book because it's going to put their kids through college, which it's, it's not, not going gonna. to. You know, it would probably be a good book to have just as to go, hey, look at what this was. And because now you have the second printing that doesn't have any of that stuff in it. I just I just look at it as uh, hey, th- this is how a guy can self-destruct his own career. If, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, Adrian Syaf, uh, he is an artist on the relaunching of the X-Men Gold series. And relaunching of the X Men Gold series. X Men Gold number uh, one. What, what is X Men Gold? I I don't know. I, I think it's two different teams now. Yeah. So and they've done this before. Yeah. But in, in the book, he decided to put I guess on some of the clothing of some of the characters, T shirts and stuff, and the background images. Yeah. And in the background, some politically motivated jargon. Um, a lot of it. Uh, Middle Eastern. Well, it's mostly focused around a, a guy in the Philippines that uh, has said some of these things, and and it's um. What do you want to call it? Um, agitating? It's very agitating, yeah. yeah. Muslims versus uh, non-Muslims. Okay. Particularly uh, Jewish or, or actually, I think particularly Jewish. So he or, des- or women, Jewish or, and or women. So he decides to, uh, to kind of lay out his political allegiance in a Marvel comic book. Yeah. Not an independent book, in a Marvel comic but book. But again, this is where editors are needed and editors are lacking yeah. in comics in the in the major uh, companies these days and it's been happening like this so you for think a while. if they don't understand it as being an issue they just let it go they just let it go they don't care you don't think they go hey what does this mean here yep. or yep. ask the artist what does they that even mean ask. They, oh it looks cool yeah well anyways mm. so this book now which you know they published however many it, it, copies yeah, of knows? it is going to be republished in a cleaner version <laughs> Uh, sands like all, all of this that stuff. stuff, and in all honesty, this guy's probably not gonna have a job much longer. No, he got fired. Oh, he did get fired. Oh, yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. No, uh, they, they severed all ties with him. Yeah. 
<laughs> you're you're in a niche industry, and it, you... it took them a while. First, they they issued an apology. This is Marvel Comics, yeah. mind you, owned by Disney. Issues an apology. Uh, we we weren't aware of what the topic was, but the apology wasn't. We're sorry we hired this guy. We're sorry that we printed it with the stuff in there. It's just we sorry we didn't know what it was. Right. You know, we're sorry it got printed, and we're we're uh, fixing it. So, that, like you say, they're going to reprint the thing. And then it was about a week later or, or within the week that they, they finally got around to firing him. You're in a niche industry. That's stupid. You're, 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 I'm assuming you I mean, yes, there, I understand uh, having a stance on stuff, but maybe it's the wrong place to, in your major work that you're doing for, yeah. for a major comic publisher. And it's not unheard of that it's happened before, but now you're getting into a hot topic. You know? Right. Yeah. Oh, there, there have been. I, I've seen, oh, yeah. you know, Alan Moore, you know, he's oh, had yeah. stuff oh. put in there. People have put stuff in about yeah. Alan Moore. Personal stuff. Yeah. But when you start getting into political stuff. Yeah. You start getting into racial stuff, yep. and you're owned by Disney. This is where you're probably not going to end up doing issue number two, or you know, getting your issue number two bought pretty quickly and pretty stupid. Well, that's what that's how it goes. So I don't read any of that stuff. But what I, I was what I was going to say was was this was something that Marvel did, which which kind of pissed me off. Marvel now, Marvel Marvel now, Marvel uh, Marvel future, Marvel past. <laughs> Marvel for the longest time, the last couple of years. Well, I, mean, I meant Marvel now as the series. The... That's what. That's their. Yeah. That, the... oh, did they really do a Marvel pass in a row? No, they oh, didn't. Okay. There was there was Marvel. Don't screw with my head. There was there was <laughs> another one. Marvel something. Marvel you know Marvel butt plug. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> it, you know they 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 do all these really stupid. Like one of their things that they do at Marvel now. They've done it for the last five or six years is in between issues. Like so, if you have issue sixteen, what comes next? Seventeen. Well, now oh, they, they do, do these the... point ones. Yep. So it's a story in between, and now what they're doing is uh, they have like um, the a couple of years ago they did the Inhuman or Inhumanity event, which was about the Inhumans. Now they're doing Monsters Unleashed. Yep. So now what they do is is they'll have issue sixteen, and then you have seventeen. But in between sixteen and seventeen, you'll have sixteen point MU, which means now that issue of Captain America is tied into Monsters <sighs> Unleashed. Why bother? I, I I think it's ridiculous myself. But anyway, so what Marvel was doing for quite a long time was you buy their book. And they would give you a digital copy of that book. Yep, yep, yep. I, I needed that because for me, I have such a mess that I would get my books every Wednesday or whatever. I'd go home. I would log all the, the codes in uh, to my iPad. And then I could read them on my iPad. And reading them on my iPad, I could put them away. And reading them on my iPad is great because when you're done reading one, it cues the next one up for you. It's like it's just like having this little assistant going, you know, what next? And about three months ago, they announced that. Kirby the robot. Uh, what would you like, sir? <laughs> and at the, about three months ago, they announced we're done with that. Here's what we're going to do now. We're, we're going to still give you digital content, but it's not going to be the book you bought. It's going to be every book this month or this week in Marvel that comes out this particular week will get three codes to three first issues of a story arc. So you could get, you could buy, say, the newest issue of Captain America, and instead of the newest issue of Captain America popping up on your laptop, you would put the code in and you would get the first issue of John Byrne's Alpha Flight, and you would get the first issue of this and the first issue of this. <laughs> Obviously trying to diversify what you're reading, trying to get them to get you to buy more stuff. I don't want more stuff. I don't need more stuff. I don't read Captain Marvel for a reason. Because I don't give a fuck about Captain Marvel. Wow. I don't read. Well, I mean, it, but that's the thing. I don't read. Which Captain Marvel? The Carol Danvers one. Why not? I've never, never, I don't care. I, I read <laughs> Avengers at one point. She was in it. Fine. I just don't care. <laughs> so anyways, I don't read that stuff cause for a reason. I don't need you to try and entice me. After about three months of that, they announced that they had, I don't know if sales went down or what happened, but they went back to in the next like month. I think they, a lot of people complained about uh, it. I complained about it. It yeah. pissed me off. You know yeah. I mean? This is a dumb idea. Yeah, it was a very dumb idea. You know, I, I'm not, I'm paying $4 for this book I just want a digital copy of that book Three ninety nine. dollars drawing the line uh, well you know everyone's doing something stupid yeah so what are you reading good though Knights of the Dinner Table alright as as uh, loyal followers of us are, are aware I'm, I'm, I'm quite the fan of the Knights of the Dinner Table which is a long running publication on um, a group of people that are gamers and it's become I missed out on three years worth of this book and I they had a big sale. I bought three years, filling up that entire section that I missed. Is it monthly? It is monthly. Okay. Give or take. I mean, sometimes they slow down. The no, but I mean, it, it's, it's not quarterly. No, or, it's, yeah. it's generally a monthly book. It's a monthly magazine because the, the strips in it are, are what I read it for. Then there's a lot of gaming content that I may or may not read or, or as it goes. And there's a lot of reviews and things like that. It's, right. it's an actual magazine plus, plus the strips. But um, it's such a well-written, well-edited book. It... 
it's something I want to push at people to, to see how a comic book story with massive amount of characters can actually be handled so well. I couldn't put the damn thing down. I'm not a superhero comic either. This no, is... it's just talking heads mainly. Right. Because it, the, the, the artistry of it is limited. And, and the creator, Jolly Blackburn, who, who draws it as well, is like, yeah, I don't I don't draw that well. But nobody wants him to stop drawing it. It's it's very simplistic, stylistic, just like a, a, an old school newspaper uh, comic strip. Right. And I love it, and, and, but it's it's all about the, the storylines that go along with these characters. You just can't put it down. I love it. And this is published by who? Uh, Kenzer and Company. Kenzer and Company. Yeah, the, so the, is this something that you typically find in your local comic book store? Or? Uh, if if they're a good comic book store. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a good comic book store, you carry Knights of the Dinner Table. Yeah. If, if it's not, you don't. If not, uh, go to a game store, and they'll probably have it. Yeah. Um, and if the game store doesn't have it, you can find it online pretty easily. Do they offer this in trade, or is this just Oh, yeah, trade? they collect all the strips in trade. Okay. Yeah. I think they're up to, like, 54 volumes. What issue are they on? 200 and... 30 some 40 and they've never rebooted the one no they don't have point ones no wow this no. is like there I, are some there are some miniseries that's and, fine and things of that the nature. miniseries are acceptable but uh, other than that no and and they do there's another series of collections that they do of uh, strips that appear in so other publications they'll have strips that they'll they'll do from not time to time and they have another series of collections that they do for those strips okay which is kind of interesting so it's it's there aren't as many. There's not 54 volumes. Right, right, There's right. a lot less. It's it's just a great book. And then and then there's um, online strips he does, too. Now, does this Kenzer company, do they do other books, or are they just... They're a oh, gaming company. They're a gaming company, yeah. so they, they put games out. They do. Is there a game based on Knights of the Dinner Table? Uh, no, but a, a game came from the Knights of the Dinner Table, which was Hackmaster, which was a parody of Dungeons & Dragons. That is a game being published now... In a new edition, which is no longer a parody of Dungeons and Dragons. Really? Yeah, it's an actual game that you can play. That's not the parody of Dungeons and Dragons. His love of D and D translates through the book. The the characters in the book play this game, and then someone actually made a game out of this game. Out of this exactly. Game. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It was it was a lot of fun. It's a game that we'll be playing very soon. All right, all right. Yeah. So, what else are you reading currently? Oh God, what else? Um, I've I picked up a couple of the DC uh, Young Animal. Young Animal, Young yeah, Animal. the Gerard Way Gerard from Way. Uh, My Chemical Romance and other other things. Yeah, um, I picked up a few of those. Uh, the Doom Patrol book, which is okay, and apparently is going on hiatus because it's running behind. The one I really enjoyed was uh, <laughs> one of the craziest titles. Dave Carson as a cybernetic guy. I love that one. Yeah, I, I, have, I did not read that one. It's really good. It's witty. It's uh, strange. It's drawn. It's uh, Michael Avon Oming. Okay, yeah, or Eming, or how? Yeah, I think Eming. Yeah. Even, Whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Powers. Yeah. If everyone knows what Powers is because they've done a TV show on the PlayStation <laughs> On the PlayStation 2. <laughs> so uh, it, it's it's really well done. I mean, it, I don't recognize the DC Universe as a whole anymore, so I don't read any of the, the main book. This one seems to have suffered the least amount of uh, destruction after the Flashpoint and right. whatever else they've done to, to the DC Universe because Cave is still the same guy. Uh, pretty much everything that ever happened to him in the 60s books still happen to him. He's just older and he has a daughter. Well, that was probably part of the caveat of him yeah. getting that book is that, you know, they probably said, just go ahead, use that character. Do, what, yeah, you, do, do what you want, want with it. Because yeah. I, I read the first issue of the Doom Patrol. I, I've bought all of them so far and uh, I have to go back and reread it because it was... It's 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 out there. Yeah, it's, it's out, out there. there for sure. It, it makes... Uh, it gets good around issue two or three i think you finally get all the pieces put together as to what they're doing but now it's on i just read issue seven i think six or seven and it's meandering again it's not it's not following a good tangent storyline i i did the first issue i haven't read i haven't read anything past the first issue but i did the first issue of um mother panic which is which one seemed of like a good idea it, I, I just didn't get into that one it, it, basically it's a uh i, I don't think this is a uh prior character um no, i could not that i'm, I'm aware of but it, it, it's a gothamite and she's basically like a paris hilton but she's she's a socialite but she's not just a socialite she's a she's a crime fighter um and she <laughs> lives a in socialite she, crime fighter socialite crime fighter she lives she but she lives in gotham and there's they've a few times mentioned there, there's one great scene where someone you know one of her cohorts tells her you know watch out the bats out there and it, <laughs> the next line is fuck the bat <laughs> she's not afraid or at least she's not afraid of the idea of him you know as as uh, a lot of people are so uh, i thought that i think that's a, a good idea that whole thing i think another thing that i, I enjoyed 
I read the first two issues of it, is the Commandi Challenge. Have oh, you read yeah. any of that? No. That's just, it's a, I, I know they used to do these, right, where they would do... I just don't like anything that Dan Didio's got his fingers <laughs> anymore. And, he did. And, he wrote the and, first and, issue. And anytime his fingers are, you know, fist deep at this point, it's yeah. just like, you know, get, get the hell away from me. Well, it's a 12-issue series, if you're not familiar with a 12-issue series, uh, where they take the, the Jack Kirby Commandi, the last boy on Earth creation, and in every issue, it's a certain team drawing it and writing it and at the end of the book they kind of explain where they would have gone with it the next issue is the next team taking over and their thing it's it's whoever every issue is a different it's a continuing story but every issue is a different team and picking up from the point where it ends i I think three issues are out now i've read the first two and it's fun it's definitely it's it's kind of a different idea um i think dc did that at one point right challenge issues was that something they did a long time ago that i remember okay maybe i'm wrong but it, it's still it's a 12 issue miniseries and uh it's it the only thing with this one is the price point on it, it's 4.99 ouch yeah so they're they're because they know it's not going to sell that many they're plowing you yeah. you know <laughs> they've got to because hey if you're not buying those two uh two solicitations of superman and batman every month oh, the for, only two for, dc books i'm reading 2.99 now going to 3.99 because they're, they're getting rid of the 2.99 titles the only two uh dc books i'm reading currently other than those couple of uh, young animal titles are superman and batman and i fell way behind and i'm having a hard time catching up because they're just every time i get my there's books there's another superman and batman yeah. book they've only been publishing these books since probably september of last year maybe i'm wrong and they're on like issue 23 yeah. you know it's like we're already two years into this and it's only been eight months or six yeah. months nuts but uh yeah no I, I i've been bouncing around i read a lot of uh read around a, a lot of the independent books um what am i reading now uh motor girl motor girl yeah from uh abstract not familiar uh, what, i don't know he did uh Terry Moore. So Terry Moore. Oh, okay. Strangers in Paradise. Strangers in Paradise, and uh, he did Echo, which was an awesome series. If you never read that, did I read Echo? It was it was another finite series like Strangers in Paradise, but it was uh, science fiction. Very very good. No, but I have it. Ended, and I wish it didn't end. That was one that should have kept going for another year or two. At least. He just he did a very weird horror-y one. Yeah, which Rachel I, Rising, and which I, I have all the issues of. I yeah. read I read about the first three or four, and it's one of those ones I just kept buying. So I have the complete series. Oh, I'll good. read it all at one. Read point. it. I. I I got about uh, I don't know, maybe two years in before I had to stop, and uh, I do mean to, to finish it because yeah. it was really good. It's definitely on a different tack from the other ones. This one is very strange. It's more along the lines of Strangers of Paradise, and it apparently has some kind of connection to it. So and Strangers of Paradise was out for quite a long time. That yeah. was a long running series. Yeah, so I like that. Um, I picked up a book called Marry Me, uh, which I, apparently is a uh, online comic strip, and now they're publishing it. Really? It's a odd one, but I like it. Yeah. You know, a, a rocker girl like, uh, say, uh, Miley Cyrus, in the middle of her set, brings somebody up from, from uh, the floor and marries them on stage. And, and the guy is only there with his with his friend. He has no idea who this woman is, you know, and, and all that. And, and they're trying to figure out whether or not she actually act- did marry him on stage. And So this so this is going to follow their relationship, hasn't Yeah, it? it's it's one of those. It's it's a talking head one, again. I love, mean, I, love at first sight. Yeah, I wouldn't even say that. Really? Yeah, it's an interesting book. I, I've, I've enjoyed it. I, I wouldn't continue it if, if, if I didn't like it right, right from the get-go. But. Yeah, because you do your books through uh, a mail order system, yeah. so... You you have to figure these things out and adjust quick. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you're you're definitely. You, I, I've seen some of your books. You're definitely. Uh, oh, I like the oddballs. You like the oddballs. I, I still I'm, I still get all my Transformers books, but I'm way behind on those. So how many Transformers books are there now? Still three. I'll tell you what. Three, three of the ones that I want to read. There there might be tie-ins to the the cartoon series and the movie series. I have no interest in. But they did they did a um, IDW which does the Transformers books recently uh, did good a, old IDW recently did a, uh, a uh, what was it called another uh, game publisher. <laughs> oh yeah, they, they do have some kids. What, what was the what was that event they did uh, with all the Hasbro stuff? Oh, um, Revolution. Revolution, yeah. I didn't read Revolution, but I'm a I'm a big GI Joe fan. So when the new GI Joe series came out, I I got I said get me the first issue. Get the first issue. I bring it home. And to me, a first issue should be pretty inviting. Yep, should be. This this was I I very rarely ever drop a comic after half of an issue. By the time I somehow realized that um. Skywarp from the Decepticons was a member of the G.I. Joe team while reading this thing. I just put it down and went, I'm out. Was it Skywarp or Thundercrack? It was one of the two. <laughs> purple? Is Skywarp purple? Uh, it depends on whose color. Yeah. It, 
Yeah, Skywarp should be the dark. The, the, uh, this book, this book had no redeeming qualities. The, 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 <laughs> the writing was bad. The art was horrendous. Skywarp. Sky. And then all of a sudden, a Transformer is a member of the GI Joe team. And and uh, what about Roadblock? Was Roadblock? Yeah. Roadblock was in it. It was the GI Joe team in this in this book, or at least the team they were following was Roadblock, Scarlet, Doc, who is now a woman. <laughs> Um, a black woman. A black woman. Yeah. I think she's supposed to be the, the daughter of the original doc. Really? Someone else explained that to me, but okay. I'm out. Quick kick. Who? <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about J. Joe. Can we talk about J. <laughs> Joe? Yes, let's. I was a huge J. Joe fan as a kid. And when you go <laughs> quick, back and quick you, kick. When you go back and you look at at, at at the releases of the Joes. Oh, the terrible racial st- stereotypes they oh, had yeah. too. Just... But you look at the releases of the Joes. You remember the first the first series of Joes they had? They were all in green camo. Yep. There was all well, basically the same except yeah. for you know that Flash would have a oh the red the, the a red, red vest, red vest and... so you had Flash Laser Soldier yeah you had Clutch he was the the Jeep guy <laughs> you had Grunt who was like the Grunt Soldier yeah. you had Rock and Roll Rock who was the Heavy Machine Gunner but they were all basically Army archetypes that yep. you can go okay and then Zap you had Zap you had uh, who was the uh, the the guy with the with the uh, the mine the, the land, uh, landmine uh, guy that was um. Oh, what was his name now? Mind Detector. I don't yeah. remember his name, though. But as you went along, I remember the first one. I remember even as a kid. The first one that screamed out to me that we've <laughs> we've crossed a line on G.I. Joe. And I was eight years old. <clears throat> I loved it. But I remember it because the, the figure called out to me. I had to get this. Well, as, as the, they added on to the characters, you got more and more of them that were different. Yes. And different uniforms and different things. And, and, and the first one that I remember really screaming out to me, different. And it was the colors that drew me in. Who was, was it? Uh, the the yellow and red flamethrower guy. Oh, that was um, Torch. Was that? No, that wasn't Torch. No, right? Torch was one of the one of the dreadnoughts. dreadnoughts. Yeah, barbecue. Barbecue. This ridiculous. The fact son that of I just bitch. remember that. Yeah, <laughs> barbecue. And then and then and then <laughs> the next one that comes out is who was who was the guy? Oh Jesus, was it Bazooka? The guy that wore the football jersey. Yeah, because he had uh, the dog with him, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was it Bazooka and... Bazooka uh, and... I can't remember. Why his name was Bazooka and he was a, a MP. Because he had the MP hat. Yes. Yeah. It, <laughs> so quick kick. We'll get the quick kick real yeah, quick. quick. G.I. Joe, you obviously have two of the coolest martial arts characters of all time. You have Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Who, who are just... Still are to this day. Ninja. 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 These are ninja. Ninja. You have two... You, Snake Eyes. You don't need another martial artist on the Joe team when you have Snake Eyes there. But we get quick kick. <laughs> quick kick was Bruce Lee, basically. <laughs> But his costume was the most goddamn ridiculous thing of all time. <laughs> Quick Kick is is a member of a army special force, basically. Have to put a picture. Up. He's we're gonna put a picture of on somewhere. The Quick Kick. He, so he's <laughs> he's a shirtless Asian guy with a uh, with a bandana in his hair. He's got like a couple bandoliers with, of course, throwing stars on them, and he's wearing black gi pants. No, no fucking shoes. shoes. No fucking shoes. And I remember like watching the cartoon, and everybody's just out there shooting their lasers. And there's Quick Kick with like his nunchaka. And, like, what the fuck were you thinking? What was going on at this point in the GI Joe universe? Selling into it. This is around the same time that all of a sudden Refrigerator Perry yeah. and Sergeant Slaughter became Sar- characters. Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> they really got crazy with them. They they, they run a, they run oh, a article God. every once in a while. I think it's on <laughs> IO9. The, the dumbest. The top ten yeah. or top twenty dumbest uh, oh, GI Joe characters of all time. And Quick Kick isn't even on it because they're really are worst ones. Oh like, towards yeah, the end, there's some really bad ones. Towards the very end, there's some. There's one, the one that always wins. I don't even know who he is. Ice Cream Soldier. I think he was like towards the very end of the run. Like when I don't, I don't even remember. when Hasbro was like, we're not even making these fucking things yeah. anymore. Yeah, Quick Kick is just it's just a terrible character. It's just oh god. Yeah, last year for New York Comic Con. <laughs> oh god, nobody. Nobody was cosplaying quick. No, 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 no. <laughs> so last year, I'm trying to get to New York Comic Con, and just between other things, money was a little tight. This guy that I know through the comic book store is a huge G.I. Joe fan, and he was telling me how he recently purchased a USS Flag. He got a oh, full the... USS Flag, which is the aircraft carrier that I had as a kid, but this guy still is, is collecting stuff. He's a couple years younger than me. So I'm cleaning out. I'm in my comic book room a couple weeks before New York Comic Con. I'm cleaning out one of my closets, and I find all my, well, not all, but I find my G.I. Joe's from when I was a kid. So oh, I open them up, and they're they're still in. I had these little, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about, the little action figure cases. You oh, pop yeah. them open, and they're in their own individual. Yep. You're basically like matchbox yes. collector boxes, and you just put the figures I pull them there. out, and I've got. Not too many people had those, you know. I've got a Cobra Commander. The case is probably worth money. Yeah, I've got a Cobra Commander. I've got a Destro. I've got all this stuff. 
Destro. So I ended up selling him all this stuff. Destro Scottish, you know. And uh, yeah, Destro is Scottish. He's 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 Laird Destro. Laird <laughs> Destro. So I ended up selling him all this stuff, and it, it made me feel kind of good as a collector to know, especially since this stuff had been preserved in a closet for about twenty five years. Huh. He's been buying a lot of figures over time, and he told me he goes, "Your figures were the most pristine." Oh, you and sold he, them all to him. I sold them all to him. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got a couple hundred bucks, and I mean, there was nothing. Um, I I had um, you, I had. You don't want to save one like Stalker? No, I, got, I had Stalker. I had Stalker. I had Jesus. I had Snow Job, and I had. Snow I, job. I, I, I had, I had I had Storm Shadow. Man, and I, I remember had... when Snow Job first appeared, and it was like he was the first one in in a color that didn't have any drab green in it. Yes, he was just total white outfit with yep. the, with the shocker red, red hair, beard. the red beard. <laughs> yeah, Snow Snow, Snow Job. Job. Ro- I, I had a roadblock in there. Roadblock. Um, I had a Zartan, but he did not change color anymore. That's probably been <laughs> long long gone. Um, Zartan. But he, he bought those from me, and he, and he was telling me he's like, I've been buying figures for years, like at shows and like private collectors he's like yours were the best and i was like i was proud of that i was like felt really good and he goes your cobra commander he's like i was gonna he showed me before he paid me there was apparently uh I'm nodding my head just there was apparently <laughs> two different uh logos on cobra commander's chest oh really i guess the first one was small the second one was bigger if it was a small one it would have been worth hundreds on its own huh. he showed me he, showed, he brought in an article about it and it, mine was the large Weird. one so unfortunately it wasn't but but he has a flag he has all my jjos and then a couple weeks he's a facebook friend of mine he took a picture of all my Joes on the deck of the flag. Oh, gee. And I'm like, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm going, I'm like living vicariously through, through this guy. I'm like, that is awesome. Yeah, the, the G.I. Joe collectors are, are pretty rabid. They have a, a convention every year, I think, yeah, right? Somewhere. Out in Colorado somewhere? Yeah. There was, there was for the anniversary of uh, the original Joe, they, they had a big, big event, I guess, on, on one of the aircraft carriers. Really? Yeah. That was a few years back. but Yeah. How long has it been since the original Joe? Are you talking about the 60s yeah, Joe? 60s, okay, yeah, Okay, yeah. Because 82 was around the time of, no. of the, the Hasbro yeah, stuff. Yeah, it, it was a big deal. I, I Even I, I perk up and, and read about that kind of stuff because it's, it's it's a collector thing. Right. It's, oh, it, I, I, I it's always it. fun to, to discover other people's interests. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've been to toy shows. You ever been to one of those? Full-on toy show? No. Now. And, I, and I mean like a, to, a collector toy show. Not not the where they introduce new toys. This is this is like a, a comic book show, but just toys. Just toys. I've been to one that was called a toy and collectible show that was more comic stuff. Yeah, I think they kind yeah, of that happens. Yeah, no, I, these are just toys. Yeah, they did they did one in New Haven a few years ago, the New Haven Collectors and Toys Show, and it was ninety percent comics. Yeah, now these these guys pretty much toys, and it's ridiculous. Yeah, the things you see. First off. <laughs> My friend Bob uh, Sacramento, Bob 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 McAllister, Bob Bob McAllister. You are now Bob Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> Bob and I, Bob is one of my friends from uh, the Chicago area, and uh, he and his friends out there all dragged me out to a few of these toy shows, and they had this whole thing about toy show etiquette, where <laughs> toy show etiquette was be as rude as possible because everyone else is rude to you, and they were right. It was ridiculous. Like the vendors and stuff. No, the people. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, because they're trying to—they're trying to snatch yes. the shit up, bumping into you, moving you out. It's like going to a, you ever been to a, a expect discount when those things were in <laughs> yeah. the state? Yeah, it was like going to those. You know, fighting with a little Thunderdome. Old, yeah, oh, it was terrible. Yeah, the Thunderdome of pharmacies. <laughs> <laughs> Two men enter, one man leaves with aloe vera lotion. <laughs> I got my jar of olives. I got my jar of olives. <laughs> they put they put you on. What did they do to Max in that movie? They put him on the. I can't remember what they called it. They put him on the donkey backwards with the with the with the water hanging off the donkey, and he's got the giant head on. The gulag. The gulag. The gulag. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. But uh, the, the shows were interesting because of the toys that you'd see, things yeah. things you didn't think out think of for years. I bought a couple of uh, old Transformers that I was never able to get as a kid. You know. Metal transformers. Oh yeah, I, I had a bunch of them in the original box and stuff. You know, still open. Let me let me guess. Optimus Prime. No, I didn't get Optimus Prime. It was, it was too expensive then. No, I, I got Trailbreaker. Trailbreaker. If you don't know, John's a sexually obsessed with Optimus Prime. <laughs> he's got he's got kind well, of a I, crush on him. It's okay. I, I I like I like the Autobots. I like the Decepticons. I just like my original G one stuff. Yeah. You, know, you get crazy like. Uh, Ice cream soldier or a barbecue and there, there was there nuts. was uh, I, I was a Transformers collector when I was a kid too. I was always more into GI Joe, but um, but I love the Transformers. My, some of my favorites were I, I loved Grimlock. I loved the the Dinobots, the original Dinobots. Yeah, yeah, those were pretty cool. They were cool. It was a, it was a great introduction and. and uh, 
these guys are really smart when they they like, created these things. It's yeah, amazing. I don't know. I still I still have that thing for the Transformers. I yeah. like those characters. I like. Yeah, I know the TV shows are big half hour cartoons. Oh, but I mean, in, in all honesty, like, though, commercials. One of the things that probably helps. I mean, and you've said it before, is like especially like the, the IDW series. You, you, not just you, but I've heard it. These are well written comics. Oh, they these are. are. These aren't just you know robots fighting robots. No, there's, it's, there's, uh, there's, there's, there's social it's, political commentary. Right. Right. <laughs> it's, it's insane. You know. It's great stuff yeah it, it's the the science fiction aspect of it is way above and beyond i can't even remember the last time i saw one of these guys transform they're really just, they're all in robot form for the most part they 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 joke about their their uh, other form a lot and they really like, barely show it yeah because it like some of them, their, their their form is so useless and they're like what what was your what do you transform into like well there's these guys that were one shot transformers. They were bombs. Oh, so they they they'd drop them from uh, from uh, orbit height and they'd go down and they explode as soon as they got to a certain level. But uh, there was one one guy that never exploded. Then he went into the, like stasis lock, which is basically suspended animation for transformers. Right. And when they found him again, it, they had to turn off his ex- <laughs> explosive so he didn't blow everybody up. And he's that's his transform. That's his alt mode, what they call. Is he's a bomb. He's a bomb. Yeah. Tra- Transformers is one of those things that, uh, as a kid, I loved I lo- it. I love what they do with that. I love the toys. I-, I read the comic, the Marvel comic, when I was a kid. Yeah, and I, then, have, I have them all. And then about, I, I don't letters, know. I got letters published in them. Oh, you got letters published and everything. <laughs> about 10 years. I-, I-, I defy any of the listeners of our show to go back and dig out some <laughs> mid-'80s DC comic books and then look through the letters page. You're going to find a Sir John from Portland, Connecticut yep. letter in there somewhere. There's a few. There's there's more than a few. I, I've actually, as I'm reading old books, I go, holy shit, I know this guy. <laughs> it's like it's almost like that moment where you're like, oh my god, look at that. And I'm like, I know someone famous. <laughs> About ten years ago, they came up with the Transformers movie, and uh, I got to admit, I really enjoyed the first movie. I had fun with it. I think it had I had that level of fun. I think the, the effects um, were good. The, the original Transformers movie, yeah. not not the not the not you the, got the touch. Oh come on. No, that, that was movie. good too, but that, that was you know that was different. I'm talking about the live action movie. And boy, did I! I don't think I could think of a, a franchise that went downhill faster than that fucking thing. No, uh, n- nope. The second one was terrible. Hang on, I got nope. The second one was terrible. No, I got nope. No, you can't think of anything. <laughs> the second one was terrible, but it had moments. The third one that was that came right from your gut. Yeah, it did. The third one. Excuse was me. one of the that only came all the times way from New <laughs> the New Glarus, all the way from Wisconsin. <laughs> the third one was one of the only times I can remember in the movies in the last like ten years that I I actually thought I'm going to leave this movie. Like which I'm, was which was oh the third one was when uh, what's her face uh, w- wouldn't come back because, right uh, and everybody Megan Fox yeah. everybody was a Decepticon in the third yeah, movie yeah that was uh, Patrick Dempsey Patrick Dempsey was a Decepticon <laughs> and and <laughs> that honestly was, that was pretty bad and honestly and they got they got progressively worse too well there's one after it I never saw it the one Mark Wahlberg I never saw the fifth one uh, the, well the fourth one the fifth one's coming out this year or this summer no that's the sixth one is it really yeah. Okay. The fifth one has the Dinobots. Never saw it. It's like two and a half hours long. Refused. It's stupid long. It's on Amazon Prime for free, and I'm bored half the time, and I'm not going to watch oh, that. You, not only will you be bored, you'll have to listen to uh, John Goodman be John Goodman as a Transformer. Walter Sobchak as a Transformer? Yeah. Oh, no, actually, not even that. Um, what was the character he played on um, on Roseanne? Dan Connor. Yeah. Dan Connor as a as, Transformer. As a, as a smoking Transformer, yeah. Who did he play? A hound. Hound was the the jeep. The jeep. Okay. The uh, the army jeep. Yeah. So he's basically the army jeep, but he's one fat. So there's a fat <laughs> transformer. A transformer. It smokes a metal cigar, and uh, yeah, it's it has a beard. <laughs> a metal beard or a hair beard? A metal beard. Life. Well, hey, they they figured those two rapping transformers did so well for him. That was bad. <laughs> That was the second one. That was really bad. Uh, wasn't it great when they got ripped to pieces? That, that was like the Jar Jar Binks effect. <laughs> like, you know, the whole time Michael Bay really wrote that, and the whole time Michael Bay, he was like, these guys are going to really, you're, you're going to want to see more of these guys. And it's like, oh, my God. You know, it makes me laugh, dude, that, that you bring that up. I watched that movie about uh, the creation of the return of Superman. Oh, oh, yeah. The, whatever happened to the, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, was it John Peters? Yes. Oh, he's nuts. Wow. He's, yeah. If, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, uh, I don't know who the gentleman who made it was, but there's... Yeah, it's... Um, uh, God, I, I met him at New York Comic Con, and I bought it two years ago. 
it's a documentary about the Tim Burton well, Superman was, film. The, the, the aborted Superman yes, film. Yes, the, the that, one that never got made. Yeah, that it was originally Kevin Smith written, or not not even originally Kevin Smith written. He, no, he, he took wrote over. a second yeah, treatment. Yeah. And then it was uh, Tim Burton. Yes, starring Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage. They have yeah. scenes in this in this thing with Nicolas Cage getting fitted for the costume. Yeah, it's scary. If you ever get a chance to see it, I think it's on Netflix. It should, it should be. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I own it, but I've seen it like on one of those streaming things. Oh. It is, it's scary. It's scary how close they came to it, making this. It's terrifying, what, what, like you're saying about Michael Bay. Like, oh, we should get this in, in the movie. Yeah. It's it's John Peters sitting there saying the same thing in front of a camera and admitting to it. Yeah. Well, Mr. Well, 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 uh, Mr. Hairdresser to the stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, he, he, you know, he produced the uh, the 89 Batman movie, and I think he let it get to his head. And it doesn't, yeah, always, he, it doesn't always work universally. What, what was his, he had a partner, too, at one point, and they, yeah. they, they produced a whole bunch of movies. But he's still involved with DC movies. All I know is, I, think, I don't know if it was in that movie Make or him if darker. saw it Make somewhere him darker. else. Yeah. Make him darker. Make him darker. It's yeah, gonna be darker. He, he told he told Kevin Smith that he wanted the spider in it. Yep. And the, the Thanagarian the snare Thanagarian beads. snare beads. So Kevin Smith writes in the spider, and then the movie never gets made. And then Kevin Smith's telling the story about how he goes to the movies a couple years later with his kids or whatever, and they go to see Wild Wild West. <laughs> and the ending of what if you don't remember the ending of Wild Wild West, a the bad guy movie. the bad guy has a giant mechanized spider, and it was a John Peters produced movie. Right. So it was like he just wanted his spider in the goddamn movie. Yep. Terrible. It's terrible. It, it's 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 funny to to watch the bits that Kevin Smith says, and then watch Peters' uh, response to yeah. it. it. It's it's an amazing little bit of interviewing. I'm I'm actually surprised that this guy got interviews from both of them and was able to to put it together without them either one of them actually having, actually having any kind of complaint about yeah. it, especially John Peters. But you, well, you know, Kevin Smith's going to talk about it. Yeah, anyway. he doesn't care. But, I, but it, me not being a Kevin Smith fan, found that very entertaining. Yeah, and uh, quite eye opening. I, I liked how he, he basically just kept going back to the studio and yeah. they would tell him, rewrite this, and yep. he'd come back, and he was doing this for like like two years or oh, something. Oh, yeah, he was on that script forever. Yeah, he probably got paid a good chunk of change oh, right, in, in the end. Which, which uh, again, is the problem with uh, the X-Men guy. Um, Brian Singer? Brian Singer's. Yeah. Brian Singer's version of, of, of uh, Superman. The Return of Superman, was it called? Superman Returns. Superman Returns. They had to use so much of the money from that particular movie to pay off the people for yeah. this yep. movie that never got made it's amazing to think it, it might that. be an unpopular opinion i don't think that that movie was bad i think that it, it was, wasn't good i think that it, it i think it was too steeped in the christopher reeve movies i think it was trying to no, be i a, thought it, i thought it was good that way that was probably the best thing it could do and move forward yeah i just it did get weird in places oh and, well the, yeah the stalker superman stalker superman was the, i didn't like and, the kid no the kid was and and, and i think i think one of the I, weakest I, points was another lex luther uh uh, land grabs. Game. Well, yeah, I know that was that was. Dumb. I didn't think he was the best Lex Luthor. Everyone else seems to think he was awesome, but I didn't think so. I also th- the girl that played Lois Lane. Yeah, no, uh, Kate Bosworth. She was terrible. Yeah, absolutely terrible. But it, Brandon Routh was great. He was great. He was great. It's too bad it didn't continue. But you know, the movie made money, but it really didn't make money. Yeah. Yeah, it probably it probably ended up breaking slightly even after paying off the I, people. For, yeah. After Nicholas Cage and. Well, Tim Burton particularly, because yep. Tim Burton got a pair of play yep, he did too. deal. Yep. No matter what happened, he got paid for that movie. Yep, and he, all the people that they, they brought in to, to do... How many... The concept th- artists Right, stuff, how yeah. many concept artists were there? Yeah. Like 15 of them? Oh, yeah, that was one of the best parts of that of that documentary is when they're going through the concept Jesus. art. Jesus. And you see, like, some of the stuff was what? so well done. Right. And you'll never see it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's almost a relief because some of the stuff they talked about was just... Yeah. Superman, what was it? Superman of the Arctic fighting a polar bear? Yeah, oh, God. And then Kevin Smith's uh, response to all that. He's like, yeah, okay, I'll put a polar bear. He's like, why does he need polar bear guards? And right, why, why, does, <laughs> why does Superman need polar bear guards? <laughs> he's Superman. Yeah, he's Superman. What does he need a guard for? Yeah, Good any, stuff, though. Right? Yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. I enjoyed that. I, I, I remember... Particularly, the thing I remember about that DVD the most was, so this is like two years ago, you were there near Comic-Con, and we were on that section of the floor where there's just like tons of stuff, and I saw it, and I went, eh, it's 25 bucks, well, I'm going to be here for a few more hours, I don't want to spend all my money, I, I want to make sure, so I'll, I'll come back. End of the day, I said to my buddy Tony, I'm like, let's, I want to find that DVD. We, we walked around that goddamn floor for like Never half an hour, it, yeah. no, and then and finally found it. Oh, yeah. But it was just one of those things where it's like, I know it was over here, and yeah. then you know, you know how the setup of New York Comic Con oh, yeah. is. It's labyrinthian. Yeah. So finally, we're walking around, and I finally went, "There it is!" And I, I, I grabbed it, and I watched it like the next day. And it, it, it's a good documentary. Another good documentary that I watched very soon after that, that kind of had a, a similar feel, was 
Jodorowsky's Dune. Oh yeah, that's an awesome movie. That's that's it's a great movie. Just, you can't stop watching that. That that is you know the director uh, Alejandro Jodorowsky who made a bunch of like really crazy cult movies in the sixties oh, yeah. and seventies and his whole idea of making uh, his version of of. Dune in the early 70s and who he wanted to star in it, Mick Jagger. Yeah. Who, uh, Mick Jagger, Orson Welles. How he was all about getting these people and the stories throughout the whole thing are just Oh, the fantastic. development of it. I, he had so much concept art put into it. Ended up, all the people that worked on it moved over to other products, uh, other, other productions. Alien. A, a lot, Alien. a lot of the people yeah. from Alien were from that. From that particular... Because uh, it, it obviously didn't happen. Yeah, it, it got so far, but it never... At, never at one point, they thought it was going to be like a 12-hour long movie. Yeah. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of really cool... I, I've always been really fascinated by not just movies, but how movies are made and the story behind how things are made. And that one is unique. It's super unique and it's super fascinating. Yeah. Um, I, I've always really been into the stories about how something gets made. Yep. The stuff that you don't necessarily know... That's why I, I don't do it a lot anymore because I don't have as much time. But like I always like to watch uh, DVD commentaries. Oh, it's great because you you learn so much about these. You know, you think one thing and 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 it's told another. Some commentaries are good. A, a lot of them aren't. It depends. Yeah. You have to have someone with a personality. Well, it, it's that, and it's like the commentaries that you get for. Um... Say Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So any of those uh, Lord of the Rings movies, they're difficult to listen to because one, they're either patting themselves on the back, right? So you get you get the director and, and his and his writing team, and I think he's married to one of them anyway. Yeah. So they're all licking each other and you know, <laughs> whatever the hell they're doing for their for their commentary, and it, and it's boring to listen to. Then then you get the artists, and the artists are interesting for a good twenty minutes, and then it gets boring because then they stop talking. Right. So they're watching the movie like, oh, I remember when I designed that. Like, dead air, you know. And, yeah. and you're just waiting. And then you get the actors who just want to joke around. And in some cases, it's fun. Most cases, like a big, long movie and a long shoot like that, it's just dull. Yeah. I don't want to listen to these people. I definitely don't watch as many as I used to. No. I can't I mean, remember the last time I threw one on. The, 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 this is one I go back to all the time. Conan. John Milius. John Milius. Yeah, John Milius and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's awesome to listen to because they... Milius is so dry, and Schwarzenegger is so busy going, ah, you, you, you remember when I fell down that hole? I, you know, I was bleeding out. And he's like, oh, oh, yeah, I remember that, Arnold. Yeah, that was, that was, a, that was, a, that was a fun time. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> and then they get into some of the weird stuff. Look how I slapped him on the ass. So tell me about the riddle of the steel. Oh, it's about the steel. The whole movie, Arnold. Do you remember? And it, like, it's just a weird situation. Yeah, John, it's so surreal. John, John Milius is kind of known as like kind of like a, a very blog kind of guy, but he he does all that macho shit. Like he he, he, he supposedly I don't know if it's true. He supposedly is the one that wrote the Indianapolis speech in Jaws. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, <laughs> Steven Spielberg had it all written out, and they, they they needed it touched up, so they gave it to this guy. Uh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, because he's like you know he's like Captain Wartime. Yeah, but it's it's fun to listen to that and and. Uh, like I always say, the, the the stuff on The Simpsons uh, for for uh, commentary, yeah, it's just as good as watching the TV show. I mean, they're they're so they're having so much fun talking about how terrible it was to make some of these episodes and how much fun they had doing, and they just they get into whatever they were doing at the time. You know, who, you know, someone had a kid, it's like, oh really? Like, hey, and you worked with this guy at this point and that point. It's just fun to listen to it. They're really funny people. So you, you, when, you, when you get that kind of thing, it's it's uh, the the commentaries are just as good. You bring you bring the Simpsons up, and I, I think I've asked you, but I don't know if you've done it in the last couple of days. Have you seen uh, the new Hank Azaria show, Brockmire? Yet? I have not. I've seen the first episode, and I a half of the second episode, and I had a streaming problem, so I didn't get to finish it. It's quite funny. Yeah. He he basically plays the uh, he plays the uh, just a he's, bit he's, outside. He's he's that guy. He's <laughs> he's that guy for uh, for like a Kansas City team. He's been around forever. And the first episode is him calling a game after he found his wife having an orgy with like the entire neighborhood. <laughs> And uh, this is an IFC show, and they don't pull punches on this show. <laughs> they, there, there's some pretty so he's he he and and Hank Azaria is is a super talented dude, and he he's is. just he's super funny. Um, and I I implore you to watch it, and uh, it just the whole scene that sets this up is him kind of, and, and it's good because you see him he's he's drinking like bourbon or something, and he's struggling with not wanting to say the things he's going to say, but he's doing this job of he's calling the game, and then all of a sudden he starts talking about what's going on in his life. But it, there's this, the, the great part is there's these little parts that are peppered in where he's like, and there's my wife with a dildo up her ass. 
the count is two and two, and he's still calling the game. And you you get the reaction of the people at the at the uh, at the um, concession booths are getting their popcorn and they're. Did he just say dildo? Uh, it, it, it's it's got him and it's got um. He ends up he ends up for about ten years leaving America and and he ends up working cockfights in Thailand and calling all these weird things, and he comes back to America to work for this. I think it's in Pennsylvania. This the. the Pittsburgh Frackers. Wow, they're this really <laughs> shitty team. Amanda Pete is the owner, and uh, and he he comes back. Fracker. So yeah, you you, you it, it's quite funny if if, if you're looking uh, for something new to watch, uh, Brock Meyer on well, IFC. That's, that's all I need. More more shows. <laughs> I've got so many shows to watch. Yeah, me too. I can't even keep up anymore. Although I did get caught up on Flash. I am nowhere near caught up on Flash. Yeah, don't, don't waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch an episode of Legends though, the other day. Oh, yeah. I watched. I watched the episode uh, where they go to the Civil War South. Oh yes, and it wasn't ends, that great? Uh, it was better than the Samurai episode because the Samurai episode really? really sucked. You think that was better? I think so. Oh, I think so. Yeah, it, it, Legend, it, Legends of Tomorrow is not a good show. You think it's going to last? Um, I've heard it's already been renewed. Really? Yeah, I, I can't can't say that that's true. It, the rumors are that it's already going to get renewed. I they're all going to get renewed apparently. Well, and then except uh, for um, Powerless. Oh, I heard that was terrible. Uh, I I got to no, I didn't even make the second episode. I heard they're adding what they're adding. Black Lightning, right? That's gonna be Black Lightning. Uh, the pilot has been finished, I think. Okay. Um, supposedly going to go to se- to uh, season or whatever you're going to call it. Right. I don't know. So movies. What have you seen movie wise? Mm, nothing. Nothing. You I... saw Rogue One finally. Oh yeah, I saw Rogue One. That that wasn't a very endorsing. I saw Rogue One. I saw Rogue One. So what did you think? Why did we get a story we already knew that? Well, you knew that was coming. But what did you think of what they did with the story? Uh, it bored me. Did it? Yeah. Nothing in it. You didn't no, like anything in it. No, nothing. I didn't like any of the any of the lead actors. I wasn't. I, mean, a, I wasn't a fan of her. I no. I, I, I liked some of the characters. No. I didn't think that she yeah, really. I mean, Donnie Yen's character and uh, the the his supposed <laughs> lover or whatever. Machine Shooty Machine Gun yeah. or whatever they. <laughs> Yeah, the honest trailers they call them that. Shooting that oh, I didn't see them. Oh, yeah. I'll have to watch that. Yeah. Um, Shooting machine gun or something like that. <laughs> Those two were probably the best, most fleshed out characters yeah. that that made sense. The the rest of them, I don't know. And you know, I had to watch it a second time. Didn't I, I think I liked it even less the second time. Really? Yeah. I don't know. The putting the fake people into the the, the computer generated people over. I don't know. I can't. The, the computer generated people. It's it's a good way to make things just uninteresting to me. Yeah. And, just put another actor in there. You didn't. You didn't like computer generated Peter. To, uh, Peter uh, uh, Cushing. <laughs> Cushing. No, I. I. I wanted to, and it, I just couldn't. The it, Rebel Alliance. The, the the guy. All right. So Star Wars Rebels, the yep. cartoon, is 150 times better than any of that stuff. And the guy that plays the the voice of of uh, Grand Moff Tarkin in that show should have done that voice because i don't think it was the same guy probably not it, it was a terrible v- rendition yeah it, occasionally it looked pretty much like peter cushing but you knew there was a person actually underneath all that yeah i i, I probably i was okay with yeah. them using the character i would have been fine if they never had him turn around yeah you, know, you maybe you did the thing where you see him in the in the, yeah. in the mirror or in the window yeah. and you know you, you you say something i didn't think they had to i know they wanted to establish that there was some kind of uh rivalry between him and krennic the, the, the guy that was you know oh yawn <laughs> another another boring person. I don't know. No, the most interesting character in that was uh, the the predecessor to Admiral Akbar. I mean, General Radis. I, <laughs> he was interesting. Yeah, well, that was it. I just it just didn't do it for me. The, yeah. movie, the whole premise of the movie just doesn't do it for me. I don't need to know all that. I did enjoy it, but I do agree that it was um it it it, it, had, it had its moments. I I do think it failed with the with the main character. I didn't. She didn't connect to me at all. No, not at all. Not at and all. I love I love Mads Mikkelsen. Yep, I wanted to like him more, and yeah, eh, just didn't do it. Yeah, just didn't do it. It, it the honest visually, truth. Yeah, honest. visually, it's it's interesting, but it just that's the same thing that happened with uh, what, what the the. The Force Awakens, my morning wood movie. So right. Visually interesting, but bereft of story. Yeah. I think I enjoyed Rogue One more, but because it was, at least to me... It's a better film. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. But still, don't care. Give me something original. They still haven't been able to do that yet. Maybe the next, this next one. Oh, the, the Last uh, Jedi. The Last Jedi? Maybe. You maybe. Think so? Maybe. We'll see. We'll see, because we're going to go see it together. Oh, God, again. Are you going to get all excited about the Millennium Falcon? It's going to be in it. It's in the trailer, so... Maybe maybe we'll finally get to see it blown to pieces. (laughs) I don't... I'm still not over the Enterprise getting blown up in uh, in Star Trek III 30 years ago. (laughs) Yeah, that was a little annoying. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of anything I saw recently. I saw Logan, which I loved. I didn't see that yet. Logan is, and I'm not an X-Men 20th Century Fox fan. I, I've i seen most of them. I think the only two that I kind of enjoyed were the second one and First Class. I didn't like either of the Wolverine movies. Didn't care about Deadpool. It was funny, but I didn't care about it. <sighs> the X-Men movies, for the most part, aren't that good. But they finally made a solid movie with, with Logan. Uh, I also saw, last week, Kong Skull Island. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I, I will say that Tom Hiddleston, the actor who plays Loki in the Marvel movies, yeah. I don't know about him as like a action lead. He, he, he's like the lead. Like the, <laughs> He plays like an ex-British uh, mercenary. He's an ex-British oh, uh, SAS right. guy who's now a mercenary. They, they hire him to take them. into. But there was a lot of good stuff in the movie. Um, at, least, at least he wasn't trying to play an American. He was not. He played that's, a British that's, guy. That's good. That's good. The best part of the movie is... When they get to the island, they find uh, a, 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 this movie takes place in, in Vietnam era, so it's like 73, 75. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. There's, there's been a pilot. The, the movie starts with, with two uh, World War II, an American plane and a Japanese plane going down. And both of the pilots survive, and they're, they're about to kill each other with, with, the, with the sword and with the gun. They're fighting each other to the death yeah. when King Kong r- arrives. And that, that kind of ends that scene. And then you go to the to this you know to the to the seventies. When you get back to the island, the American pilot is still alive. He's been living there for like thirty years on his own. It's John C. Riley. Oh, geez. and he is he is just he's been there by himself for thirty years. So he is very funny. Uh, he's a great actor anyway. He's yep. very funny. He's very uh, honest with everybody. He's like, you guys should have never come to this island, man. It was a bad idea on your part. <laughs> and uh, so it's the biggest King Kong I think I've ever seen in a movie. Hmm. When the first scene where, where they where they encounter Kong is is where they where they're flying into the island in the helicopters. He's a hundred feet tall. I think King Kong at the most was maybe twenty five feet, thirty feet in, in, in the past. Yeah, hard to say. This thing is big in this movie. Uh, I really, you know, in all honesty, aside from you know, because there, this is part of the the Godzilla universe now. Oh. This is connected to Godzilla. Oh. They, they call, they, they John Goodman's character is, is the uh, scientist who brings them there and he calls like Kong and the other animals on the island Mutos, which is what they called the <sighs> stuff in the, in the Godzilla movie. Um, and it ends, the, the ending has, uh, we're going to uh, see another Pacific Rim, aren't we? No, no, no. I think you're going to see, they, they do point out that it looks like you're going to see like, uh, uh, what did you call them? Uh, Mothra and those type of characters coming soon. So, but check check it out on the uh, check it out on the account there. It's pretty good. I enjoyed that. We'll see. Oh, just do it. You we'll got see. time. You got time. Oh yeah, I got all the time in the world. Watch Logan first though. That's really good. Oh uh, yeah. The last the last thing I saw in the theater was um, Doctor Strange. I enjoyed that, which I did enjoy. It it's formulaic, but it's again visually very entertaining. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. uh, and if you're a Doctor Strange fan, which I am not, I'm sure you're very entertained by it because there are a lot of little snippets in there for for the comic book fans. Oh yeah. But for me, I'm like oh, it's another. It's just God. Give me give me a character I really want to get into. You know, like Black Widow. I, <laughs> Yeah, but why do you want to get into Black Widow? Do you want to see a Black Widow movie, or do you want to see Scarlett Johansson? I actually would underwear? like to see, yes. Yeah, both, both. Yes, so, all, yes. all of the above, yes. all of the above. Did you go see Ghost in the Shell? She's in her underwear for like 90% of that movie. No, not yet. No. No. It doesn't interest me. It. I, I've seen the anime. Well, I don't really need to see a live-action version of it. Yeah. No, it's kind of like, why am I watching a live-action version of... Uh, animated characters you know i agree Just i watched a little bit of that great wall movie with mark with uh, matt damon why yeah i don't you know i i got the yeah i saw phantasm ravager finally did you see that yep did it tie it all together uh no 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 it because the the first four movies are very unique in that they tell a, a singular story so it, the where the Last movie ends, the first movie begins. That so, sort of so thing. So was this a well once to the well too often thing? Yeah, I think so. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't well done. It, there's a lot of little fun connections to all of the movies, but it's like on a separate level. And it, you know, the, one of the reasons I really wanted to see it because it's Angus Graham's last movie. Right. It's really his last movie. <laughs> well, he's dead. Well, I mean, I don't think he was... I'm, I'm not even sure if he was healthy enough to do the oh, scenes really? that he did, but he did them anyway. He sounds great. It's just not. It's not good, and and, it, and because it's not um, Coscarelli directing it, it's, it. He wrote it though, right? At least. Yeah, he had something to do with it. It's not very good. Hey, J.J. Abrams uh, cleaned all the uh, originals up for him, right? And uh, he did the first one. The first one. Yeah, I don't know if he, he's going to do the others. Yeah, the first one looks great. I've I've seen it since the the remastering. Yeah, it's, I've only uh, seen the first one. That's the only movie I've ever seen. It's 
I, it's something I'd like to do someday is watch all four of them back to back, but that's a long day. Yeah. I've, I've done back to back Lord of the Rings and that's, that's oh. a really long day. Oh, I, especially the extended version. I, I did that uh, yeah. right after, right after the last one came out, I got all the extended editions and on a Saturday, me and my buddy, Rich, my buddy, uh, uh, James and his wife, Allison spent the whole Saturday. We started at like nine in the morning <laughs> and we only stopped like once or twice for food. And I'll be honest with you, by the time Return of the King was on its like fourth ending, I was ready to pull my fucking eyeballs out. <laughs> that was a long day. You can do the silent jumping up and down on the bed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mr. Frodo. Hold me, Mr. Frodo. It's like, Sam, go fuck yourself. How should it have ended? I'll carry you to the... I'll carry you to the... Couldn't you just... Yeah. Was that the one that... Just to black. Just, was that the how it should have ended? The honest trailer where it's like, why don't they just get on the fucking eagle the whole yeah. time and just fly across the sky and drop this thing in? Uh. Those extended versions did have some cool stuff in them. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite things in the extended version I remember, and I only saw that one time. This is many years ago. because I've, I've never seen those movies since then. Was when they go... It's at the end of the third movie, too, when they get to the the gate of Mordor yep. and that character comes out with the, yeah, with the big teeth, the teeth and everything. I, Cause that wasn't in the original uh, no, theatrical that, version. That was it? only in the extended version. What was he supposed to be? The mouth of uh, the mouth Sauron. of Sauron. Yeah. And that actor is the guy who played, uh, I remember at the time looking this up, uh, he's an Australian actor. He played the, um, the gyro pilot in road, road warrior. He was the same actor. That Bru- was Bruce, Bruce Spence. Spence. Yes. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. But was that him. character was so fucking creepy. Looking yeah. At, you know, and he yeah, yeah. like, when he was talking, ah, he was like chomping down and everything. Love that. <laughs> there was a that's that's a movie buff night. I'm trying to figure out lines from that one. Oh God! Uh, I honestly see seen what it. you did to us, Justin Purvis. Yeah, Justin Purvis, we blame you. <laughs> so we covered TV shows we've yep. been watching. We covered some comic books. We covered some movies. Anything else out there that you're uh, you're currently anything you're looking forward to? Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Neil Gaiman in a few months. I'm going to that as well. Yeah. I'll so see you there. I have to uh, read the book. The Norse mythology book? Yeah, yeah, I have it. I just haven't opened the damn thing yet. Yeah. Yeah, you I know. gotta continue my Sandman reading because I, I, I really yeah, slacked you, off you on should, that. You should really do that. I, I want to. I, it's it, it was what I've done so far is fantastic. And uh what, um American Gods is coming out pretty soon. Yeah, so. stars, right? Yep. Yep. And while that wasn't my favorite of his written works, it looks like it's going to be really good. The early reviews I've read of the first couple yeah, episodes they're, they're are saying huge, it's fantastic, yeah. like awesome. Which is good. I'm, I'd like to see a good product from, from some of his stuff. Yeah. Because I don't think that Sandman movie is ever going to get made. At this point, probably not. <laughs> I know. What, I had high hopes for a moment. Well, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, right, was yeah, pretty, was pretty intent it, on getting so, it done. Yep. I don't know. Anything that has to do with Vertigo is just, I don't know. It's like nothing ever happens with their, their products anymore. You got the Preacher TV show. I watched two episodes of that, and I was all done. Didn't do it. I love Preacher, and it just doesn't look the same to me. It's not the same, and that's what happens when they rewrite this stuff. Even, even, if, it, even if you said it was good on a whole other level, it just doesn't. You know, give it some, give it some other name. I don't know. It just doesn't look right to me. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's not following the comic exactly. Right. It's it's rewriting. Well, what I heard it. was it, 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 that they did the first season almost as if it's a prequel, and then they're going to move into the comic. Is that? Yeah, it looks like that's what they're going to do. But yeah. I don't care anymore. I no. mean, the, the girl that played Tulip was so bad, I couldn't take it. She was the same girl from Agents of Shield, right? The the girl in the dress. Oh, really? That was yeah. her. Oh. Yeah. Wow, she was good in Agents of Shield. Yeah. Huh. That's a show I've I'm caught up on. I'm not. I'm still in the, I've, I'm I've still in the Ghost Rider it. stuff. I've, <laughs> I've enjoyed it. I don't know. A lot of people don't like it, but I like it. I've, I've liked it through the last few years. Yeah. You know, I haven't had any problem with it. No, I don't know. I've liked it. But uh, I don't know. I'm, comics are hard to hard to come by. It's like, what what are you looking forward to? Like, I don't know. Looking forward to the Bane series that uh, Chuck no, Nolan? No? I'm not. Took a look at the solicitation. I was like, yeah, that's great. I don't. DC just doesn't do it for me anymore. Yeah. They've they've destroyed their universe to the point where I don't recognize anyone. So I just don't care. I want to, but I read Blue Beetle for seven issues, and I want to tear my hair out, shove it down Scott Collins' throat, take every copy that I've got, put it on top of that, and hope he chokes to death on it because it's terrible. I blame him. Not the writer. He's uh, co-plotting it with Keith Giffen now. Oh. So I hate his art. I'd rather have Keith Giffen draw it. I like the very first series they did of him years ago. Yeah, when with, that um, with, with John with Rogers. Cull- and Cully, Ham- was it? Cully Hamner. Cully yeah. Hamner. Yeah. I, I like that, yeah. Yeah, they would know it was good. I, I Again, I don't recognize what they're doing. What's his name? Uh, Ted Cord was dead. Now, apparently, they brought him back in one of these conversion storylines. This is a oh, different geez. world. I don't know. He's, he's involved. Dan Garrett's involved in some way if he's not already dead. 
and then there's a character I, I don't know if she's related to ted or if so it's like a blue be- a blue beetle legacy book almost it's well yeah to a certain degree but it's which they the blue already beetle, did. blue beetle core but it's like the, it's it feels like watching flash you got all these people that are involved and and there's all these little villains and heroes and people that are involved that you don't even know it's just not working it's too much too fast and too stupid. I can hang with that. I don't. I'm not currently reading really much DC stuff myself. Nah, just I'm, I'm all done with DC. Dan Didio is still there, anyways. He's just ruining. What it do himself. you call him? What's his real name? Dan Didiot. The Didiot. Yeah, the Didiot. Sorry, Dan. He's not listening. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we covered some stuff. We're hey, about, we're, we're going to be appearing at all kinds of places over the oh next yeah. few months. So. You know what we should do is we should we should interview Dan Didio. <laughs> I want you to ask him like real <laughs> questions. I could do it. Yeah, I, I, I can do. It. I could. I could do it, and I would never call him Didiot during the whole shoot. You'd be like, Dan, what are you doing to the, to the universe here? What's going on? Well, let me tell you, I've got these great ideas. You ever see him when he's uh, at a podium? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, he's like a cheerleader. Yeah. A well, I mean, you know, that, that, that's his job. Isn't that's that what that's what they're paying him to do. That's just sad. It is kind of sad. What's next? Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. <laughs> There's so much stuff. Yeah, we got we got so many more episodes. We got so we, much more stuff. We got to we talk gotta get about. to episode forty six. Forty six so is where me. Forty six is where we get the, the John episode. <laughs> and, and do you not think for one second, because we talked about this in the last episode, that when we get to forty six, I'm going to remember. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm actually going to put in the notes to each show episode two, forty four more to the, the John story, and we're going to get deep into the John story. Ew. But until then, more quick kicks. More quick kicks. <laughs> <laughs> more uh, more U.S. flags, more malor- more whatever else you're going to hear on Pino Comics. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a whole ton of stuff. we got a ton Just of wait. stuff for you. I am John. I'm Sir John. And he's Sir John. And as usual, see, see ya. ya.